Hi everyone, welcome back to the 2.4 series. This is video 5. In this video you'll be learning about photosynthesis, chloroplasts and the internal structure of a leaf. And by the end of this lesson you should be able to explain the purpose of photosynthesis in words and equations, describe where and how photosynthesis happens in chloroplasts in terms of light dependent and light independent reactions, and discuss how the internal structures of a leaf are adapted for photosynthesis. So what is photosynthesis? Well, photosynthesis is the process in which plants use light energy, water, and carbon dioxide to produce glucose and oxygen. Glucose is the sugar molecule that plants use to make the energy in the form of ATP that they need to survive. We'll cover more about ATP and the process of respiration in more detail in video six. But for now, for photosynthesis to occur, plants need water, carbon dioxide, and sunlight. This water is absorbed from the soil via osmosis through the roots. This carbon dioxide is taken up by diffusion through very small pores on the underside of its leaves, called stomata. And the sunlight is captured by chlorophyll and chloroplasts. You must know this word equation for photosynthesis, but you don't need to know this chemical equation. I've just put it here for interest. There are two chemical pathways in the process of photosynthesis. The first chemical pathway is called the light dependent phase. And the second pathway is called the light independent phase. The first chemical pathway is called the light dependent phase because for it to happen, it needs light. And this phase takes place on the thylakoid membranes of the chloroplast. So here in the thylakoid membranes, light energy is absorbed by a pigment found within the thylakoid membranes called chlorophyll. And that's what this box represents. It represents thylakoid membranes and the chlorophyll inside it. That's why it's green. The light energy is used to split water into hydrogen and oxygen. And this light energy also produces a little bit of ATP. After water has been split into hydrogen and oxygen, the oxygen is released from the plant through the stomata in the leaves. And this oxygen becomes part of the air we breathe. The hydrogen that comes from this water is taken to the light independent phase, the next phase, by a carrier molecule called NADPH. So this NADPH that contains the hydrogen and this ATP produced from the light dependent phase are then used to provide the chemical energy needed to make glucose in the next phase of photosynthesis. So the second phase of photosynthesis is called the light independent phase because it doesn't need light, it's independent of light. The light independent phase occurs in the stroma of the chloroplast. Here in the stroma, carbon dioxide from the air and hydrogen carried by NADPH from the previous reaction are joined together through a series of enzyme controlled reactions to produce the final product glucose. This glucose is used in cell respiration to create energy in the form of ATP and again I'll cover more about ATP in the next video. You must remember this word equation water plus carbon dioxide and sunlight makes glucose and oxygen. You must also remember that all of the chemical pathways are controlled by enzymes. And so you can imagine the things that limit these reactions are to do with enzymes as well. For your exam, you need to know the reactants in each reaction, and you need to know the products in each reaction. So in the light dependent reactions, the reagents, the reactants are light and water, and the products are NADPH, ATP, and oxygen. In the light independent reactions, the reactants are NADPH and ATP and carbon dioxide, and the products are glucose. This is another diagrammatic representation of the light dependent in the thylakoid membranes and the light independent phases, which is in the stroma of photosynthesis. And here's another diagram that you could draw yourself. Um, you've got the chloroplast here, the double membranes, outer and inner. And you've got the thylakoid membranes in stacks called grana. And it's green because it's got chlorophyll. This is where the light dependent phase of photosynthesis occurs. Then you've also got the stroma, which is colorless. And that's where the light independent phase of photosynthesis occurs. The cells that make up a plant's leaves are structured in such a way that maximizes the rate of photosynthesis. So covering the outside of a leaf is this shiny layer called a waxy cuticle. This waxy cuticle prevents water loss, which is also called transpiration. Water loss from the upper surface of the leaf, 
leaves, which is important for stopping the plant from drying out. Underneath the waxed cuticle is the upper epidermis, this um, white sheet of cells. And beneath the upper epidermis is the palisade layer. And the palisade layer contains palisade cells, which are tightly packed together, making them look like sausages or rect rectangles. In these palisade cells, there's a high density of chloroplasts. So we'll look at this palisade cell over here, a high density of chloroplasts that are pushed up against the cell membrane. They're pushed up the cell membrane by this large vacuole that takes up most of the inside of the cell. It does this to put the chloroplasts in close proximity with the cell membrane to reduce the diffusion distance of carbon dioxide going into the chloroplast and oxygen going out into the um, extracellular space. Why is this important? Well, it needs to reduce the diffusion distance so that diffusion can be more effective and so that photosynthesis is more effective. Under the palisade layer is the spongy layer, and it's made up of these spongy cells that are more circular, they're more round, than these palisade cells, which are more tall and rectangular. The spongy layer has a lot of space in it. It's kind of like a sponge in that there's holes through it to allow gases that come from the stomata flow into the palisade layer and move freely. Why is this important? Well, gases need to be able to diffuse really as quickly as possible to the palisade cells so that the palisade cells can get um, the carbon dioxide that it needs for photosynthesis. Underneath the spongy layer is the lower epidermis. It's very similar to the upper epidermis, except for one major thing, the stomata. If we look on this side, there is the lower epidermis cells, which look like a jigsaw puzzle, and embedded through it are guard cells, which control the opening and closing of this hole, the stomata. Guard cells close the stomata to limit transpiration and limit water loss, and they open again when they want carbon dioxide to come in and diffuse through for photosynthesis. And finally, there's also the distribution of chloroplasts. So I'm just going to click onto this video so that we can see the movement of chloroplasts. As you can see here, chloroplasts are moving around the cell. They're moving near the perimeter of the cell because the vacuole is taking up the center. So chloroplasts can move inside a cell to get more light. They move towards where there's more light. This allows the chlorophyll molecules inside the chloroplasts to absorb more light energy and it makes sure that they all have equal access to the materials they need to carry out photosynthesis. Because if these chloroplasts were in a shaded spot, they're not going to get as much light as if they moved to a more um, light exposed spot. Now the thylakoid membranes are stacked on, on top of each other and the stack is called the grana. This increases the surface area available for light absorption to occur. Also, the stroma surrounding the structures, this um, white bit, is transparent, meaning it doesn't block out light. So that sunlight coming into the chloroplasts, but doesn't hit a thylakoid membrane, the sunlight rays can still keep going to the next chloroplast over. This combination of leaf cell structures and the structure of chloroplasts helps plants maximize their rate of photosynthesis. Well done, you've reached the end of the video. So by now you should be able to explain the purpose of photosynthesis in words and equations, describe where and how photosynthesis happens in chloroplasts in terms of light dependent and light independent reactions, and discuss how the internal structures of a leaf are adapted for photosynthesis. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.